in sustainable development. And we have here uh, our guest speaker that we want to discuss with them uh, these various aspects. And uh, we would like you to be engaged in this discussion. Feel free because it's a cafe, so no restriction of questions. I have my silly questions as, as well uh, that will be asked. And uh, let's uh, see how we can go further with this. Please, uh, I would like to um, uh, welcome Dr. Abir Shakwir, advisor to the Ministry of uh, uh, Information and Technology in Egypt. And um, Also, Dr. Heba Geber, a Research and Innovation Officer uh, at the EU Delegation in Egypt, and Professor Amr Hilal, Managing Director of CAHA for Environment and Agriculture Projects. And we will be joining uh, by the Italian side with uh, Mrs. Francesca Novale, Policy Officer, Assistant Project Manager of uh, FOSIV. This is an NGO in Italy. And also, Mr. Reperto uh, uh, Cerina, uh, this is um, uh, um, a desk officer uh, for Palestine and Sri Lanka in Overseas on LAS, another NGO. And also, uh, Mr. Federico uh, Potinelli, and he is responsible for the School of International Pol Policy. Uh, first of all, I would like to address, of course, uh, my questions to uh, Dr. Heba Geber because of the various funding opportunities that uh, the AU is um, making available in the Mediterranean countries. How do you see these opportunities enhancing the ecosystem in uh, these countries in order to enhance innovation uh, on the national level? Thank you, Reem, and uh, thank you to MedSpring team for the kind invitation and the opportunity to be in this very exciting and uh, kind of new event for, for me. Um, well, the EU supports research and innovation at large through um, various programs and, and instruments. Some of them are more development-oriented, and some of them, while they fund primarily research and innovation, but we still tend to believe that research and innovation are elements that support sustainable development and development even if it's not the instrument is not in primarily dedicated for that purpose um, we have various instruments actually um, just last summer we organized an event to try to bring together projects funded from us under different instruments um, but in the mediterranean we have collaborative research projects focusing on all areas that could um, lend itself to a development aspect, including all thematic challenges, health, environment, climate change, energy. But we have a very interesting instrument that I think was very successful in the Mediterranean context, which was the research to innovation. It was a call that aimed to uh, fund projects that would aim to bridge the gap between research and innovation through supporting what we can call innovation clusters. And these innovation clusters are basically, if we tend to define them in a more structured manner, are um, clusters of entities along the value chain of the innovation, bringing different entities, the industry, the academia, the research, the startups, even the national uh, authorities in a, in, a, in, a, in a local context to try to foster innovation. And activities of those projects, I think, are very interesting and, and vary uh, a lot. Some of the clusters are thematic and some are, are cross-cutting, like um, we can have a cluster in the energy and the objective at large and the activities vary between having um, capacity building uh, initiatives in the, in, in, in the innovation sector in that thematic area, but also uh, the development of new technologies, the networking that would support startups to leverage the, their potential and commercialize their technologies in addition to uh, also the opportunities through the, this type of, of, of uh, instrument or program, what we call a cluster or an alliance or a consortium, not necessarily, I don't like to tag things, but the opportunities of knowledge sharing and knowledge transfer is also, uh, and, and we 
I think the, the through through the framework program or previous instrument for funding research and innovation, we funded various uh, projects. Currently, we have our main instrument. M may I interrupt here because sure, something sure. is uh, I. Um, I wish to, to ask about the, the societal challenges that we face, uh, for example, in the southern Mediterranean area. All this uh, taking into consideration while, for example, writing the call for proposals for such clusters, or it's just an instrument to enhance the innovation as such in, in its uh, general uh, aspect without having a focus on a spectacular uh, um, aspect or the needs of the southern Mediterranean countries, for example? No, for example, in many cases, the call for proposal would address a certain area that we think of mutual interest uh, in the region or that um, we think that um, is of high, high priority for cooperation with the South Med, like energy, food, environment. But also the beauty of a call for proposal is that you can put forward an instrument like research to innovation. Like the idea is to bridge the gap between research and innovation. And it's up then to the applicants to decide what they want to do. This is, I, I always think that the beauty of a call for proposal as, as opposed to, for example, a terms of reference is that it gives more opportunity for um, designing the action that you want to do. And in, in many cases, choosing the priority or the theme that you want to address. So it's it's not always the case. It's it's variable. And um, by living here in Egypt, I will uh, be specific. How do you see this instruments and this funding opportunities enhance, for example, the uh, innovation ecosystem on a national level in Egypt? I mean, for example, if we went through uh, a whole. Um, decades of cooperation between the EU and Egypt, we will find that we had participated in the FP7 projects. We have participated in FP7 and we're looking forward to increase our participation in Horizon 2020. We have also the RDI program, which uh, funded uh, 51 projects in its first phase. In the second phase, uh, 26 projects that are always related to innovation. How do you see this um, um, uh, this integration in the innovation system here in Egypt help to change mindsets, for example, uh, on the policy level? How do you see the encouragement of young people to be engaged in entrepreneurship or in uh, uh, creating new dimensions for innovation? How do you see this uh, involved in our day-to-day -day life? Well, to be very frank, um the EU projects were sort of the first uh, projects to introduce uh, many aspects. I wouldn't say introduced innovation in the region because this is very far-fetched, but introduced many aspects and created uh, networks and, and, um, and, um, and activities that were of high visibility that kind of invigorated the culture. But aside from the EU, I, I can very clearly see as someone from the region that there is an uh, sort of an innovation entrepreneurship vibe that's growing and growing in the region in the past, I would say, five years. And while the EU projects might create an impact, they would not be able to create an impact had not they been part of an integral development in the ecosystem at large. And this is what I am seeing. So on their own, uh, they might trigger things, trigger new concepts, help to foster a culture, as I said previously, contribute to capacity building, networking, and so forth. But I see that many countries in the region, Morocco, uh, Lebanon, Tunisia, uh, Jordan, are, are more and more creating their innovation strategies, formalizing them, having a dedicated budget. Uh, many of them, their ranks, when we look at the Global Innovation Index, they, their ranks are getting improved and, and uh, incubators are being created, whether they are supported by the EU or part of EU projects, but also publicly funded. And more interestingly, the involvement also of the civil society, the universities. So while the EU, I think, contributed a lot to invigorating the, the, the notion, but um, I think the impact would be more and more and would be foreseen and opportunities for collaboration would increase as we go because of the development of the ecosystem that I can see happening uh, as, as uh, I wouldn't say on, on, on daily basis, but like we, we are always seeing new initiatives and more involvement of the youth and, and 
and involvement of the public sector and funds dedicated to, to, to such initiatives. With this question, this will give me the opportunity of uh, investigating more what the Ministry of Information and Technology does in the aspect of creating new um, technology-oriented communities, for example, and how do you see the involvement of uh, such a niche in Egypt? And um, if you can speak to us about it a little bit from the ministry's point of view, of course, and uh, from the um, NGO's aspect as well, if you would like to. Thank you. Um, thank you, Reem, and uh, thank you for uh, MedSpring for inviting me to um, be here today. Um, and um, speaking from the um, um, perspective of the um, Ministry of uh, ICT, uh, and also uh, another perspective from the NGO, I will uh, specifically say first of all what is the um, different perspectives. The government uh, is seeking an enabling environment for uh, innovation and that's why its role is to provide the, the enabling environment um, to tackle sp specific problems like for example uh, at the ministry we are uh, not only focusing on um, um, tackling like health issues or uh, contributing to uh, logistical problems, but we are sometimes focusing on very specific uh, categories or uh, strata of the society, like for exa example, people with disabilities, because the role of the government is to uh, try and see what are the main challenges facing the society and try to uh, mobilize the uh, community to contribute to solving those problems. I will uh, recall uh, or quote uh, David Cameron, the Prime Minister of uh, the UK. He said that uh, innovation comes from the society, not from the government. So uh, local uh, innovation and the entrepreneurs and local societies, they are more capable of solving the, the, the challenges they face um, through the enablement of uh, the government or the instrument that governments uh, provide them. Uh, so at the ministry, we have uh, many uh, competitions for innovation, innovators and entrepreneurship. Uh, and I will speak specifically uh, about uh, the innovation competition for people with disabilities, because this is the one that I'm managing, so I know about it quite well. Uh, we know that um, we have almost 15 million people with disabilities in Egypt, and they were totally excluded from the society. And this is actually a huge problem. Uh, not only in Egypt, but in, in, in most of the Arab countries. Uh, and when we dig deep in this uh, problem, we, we uh, found out that uh, not only they were excluded, by, uh, but the, the um, applications and programs which we call assistive technologies that are available for people with disabilities, they don't support the Arabic language. So this means that uh, in other countries, they get the support through the ICT, uh, but in the Arab countries in general, uh, they do not have this kind of support at all. And the assistive technologies, because this is maybe a new terminology for some people, it's um, mainly the mobile applications and the ICT programs, uh, which help them um, like act on their daily activities. Like, um, for example, a mobile application that reads the money for the blind or um, a translator and um, an uh, interpreter between sign language and text. And this kind of, of, of applications which compensate the, the, the senses that people with disabilities, they lost. And this, all these applications are uh, developed here in Egypt, yes. I mean with the Egyptian mines. Yes. And do you commercialize this further for other Arab countries or how does this collaboration work? Yes, um, we actually launched this competition on yearly basis uh, since 2013. So we had only two rounds and we're going to announce the 2015 round um, soon. Uh, so we, uh, we, we actually uh, have now like maybe 10 applications, they are commercialized, they are available on Google Play. Uh, some of them, we hook them with the, for example, the mobile companies, because if they are mobile applications, we make, we avail them to people with disabilities on, as a package with, with mobiles, through mobile uh, operators. Uh, now we have, um, within like a month, we will have a, a meeting with the Arab ambassadors to um, present the, um, the first, unified sign language in the Arab world, because uh, we discovered that 
people with disabilities, with, with hearing disabilities, they don't have a unified sign language here in Egypt. So they do not understand each other. And uh, it, as an ICT sector, we have a problem. If you want to develop applications for them, what, what is the, what, which sign language should we use? So we uh, worked on developing a unified sign language together with the Ministry of Education, because they have, of course, to approve it. Um, and we, de we developed an interactive dictionary and an interpreter uh, using the, the new uh, sign language. Uh, so uh, we, we actually spoke about this to the ambassadors of the Arab countries, or not the ambassadors, the, the ICT ministers, and they were very interested to, uh, to collaborate with us, in, in, especially in this project. So in the, in the coming future, I mean in one month or so, we are going to present this again to the Arab ambassador and see how we can uh, transfer this knowledge to other Arab countries because they all have the same, the, the same challenge. Okay, uh, let me put it like this. According to my understanding, you initiated this competition. You had uh, call for proposals for private sector to come up with these new ideas. Yes. And then afterwards, you're going through um, other rounds in order to gather more ideas. And now you're uh, spreading or increasing the market of the successful ideas to the Arab world. I just wanted to emphasize that the domestic market or reg uh, the regional market is a very important um, aspect that we need to be very careful with uh, when we speak about local innovation and how we should commercialize it to other countries. Yeah, that's why uh, we uh, th the deal between us and the, um, the applicants, um, we fund their projects um, and we get some licenses for free and we distribute those licenses to the uh, needy PWDs. Like for example, the, uh, the first sign language dictionary, uh, we uh, funded this project with 200,000 Egyptian pounds. Uh, and of course we give other sort of, of, uh, of um, support. So it's not only the cash money. Uh, and we, got, we, we took uh, 200 uh, licenses and we distributed those licenses to the governmental schools for people with hearing disabilities. And now we are training the teachers at the schools on the dictionary so that we make sure that we close the cycle, not only through the innovation competition, but uh, together with other aspects that make sure that this product reaches the target group. But when you make available uh, for such application, it's uh, free of charge for the uh, recipients or you, you charge them for uh, money because um, I'm I'm very concerned with the with the market and how this should be developed because if you create the need then people will be um, uh, willing to pay money for it but how you how you do it how you promote for it well there are different models like um, when I spoke about this mobile application which, which reads the money uh, part of the marketing strategy was to make it available for free on on Google Play or whatever. Um, and then you can make a deal with, with the mobile operator to pay for in, instead of the, of the customer, of the, of the people with disabilities. And this is actually uh, what happens in most of the countries. Like for example, in the States, when you make a phone call, a percentage from this phone call goes to something called the Relay Center, which is the, the mediator between people with hearing disabilities and people without hearing disabilities. So we are trying to follow different models based on the type of the program. Uh, our main uh, aim is to um, like create this kind of industry because it's a huge industry worldwide. Uh, and there is a niche here in Egypt. Uh, we have very good de de developers. Uh, we have 15 people with disabilities, which sometimes is more than the total population of some <laughs> Arab countries. So uh, our aim is to have these mobile applications uh, with very uh, low cost to the Egyptian market but at the same time, we can uh, have the 55 million people with disabilities in the Arab world having this as uh, with, with cost, of course. So we want to make um, two tracks. One of them is to uh, sell it to the Arab countries uh, with, with this huge market and avail it to the Egyptians with a minimum cost. Thank you for this clarification. It was uh, very good to know about this. But speaking about private sector, we have with us uh, Dr. Amr Hilal, who um, attained two funds from the RDI program with a very um, competitive uh, edge in the industry, uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry. And um, I would like you to elaborate more on the project that you 
had and of course to explain to us um, the ideas, how you initiated the ideas from scratch in order to know this. First of all, thank you for the invitation and organizing this nice event. And it is in my belief that uh, innovation is the way out for Egypt to go from what we already hear to what we are planning or what we are dreaming. It is only innovation that can drive us. And innovation shouldn't be in the mindset of ourselves that it is only in the research institutes, that they are only in the universities. This might be right for some extent, but to in the larger extent, innovation should be, we should live in the era of innovation, which is requested from everybody, every industry. And I believe that the very big innovation that might happen to Egypt, it is expected to come from different institutes and societies. If we look for, for example, the Facebook, this is a very uh, good sign for innovation. This is somebody who has the idea. He is not coming from the research uh, media. And we thought that Facebook is the top of the range. And now we find out also WhatsApp and, and so on. So a lot of innovation, such innovation, build a country, build a society. Now, if you are, I'm going to answer you back before answering, we are in the field of herbal medicine or uh, pharmaceutical products from natural plants. But let us see what is the total market of the international market for herbal drugs, for example, or herbal plants. It is only not more than 3 billion US dollar, and Egypt is only 100 million, and this is okay. We are number 10 in the schedule. But if we compare this to the market of the drugs and chemicals and uh, real pharmaceutical products, we will find that it is more than 840 billion US dollars. And Egypt is not on the, on the map at all. I am mentioning these figures just to know that uh, enabling countries to us is exporting by 6 billion US dollars of pharmaceutical products and technical materials. So this country is exporting as double as the whole world is exporting of the natural uh, herbal plants. So if we have a treasure in Egypt of herbal plants, what should we do? Should we increase the area or should we develop products out of it? Develop products. I think the answer is, quite, is, uh, the answer is very clear. Now, if you are coming to my humble innovation, first of all, if you'd like to make innovation, put yourself in good minds. It is not necessarily, like myself, a good mind. This is very far from being an innovation. Innovation, you will have it, if you are going to have it, by just mixing with intelligent people, like the people that we are sitting here, listen very carefully to them, and when you find a good opportunity, then you start your very long marathon of troubles and uh, efforts. So we are talking about something which we call it the rice bran, which comes out from rice milling. I think everybody here know about the brown rice and the benefits of brown rice. Everybody knows that the brown rice is more beneficial than the white rice. But actually, Egypt has more than 500,000 tons of rice bran. So I'm going to repeat the figure again. We are talking about 500,000 tons of rice bran, which is only used as animal feed. It is not used for food. It is not used for pharmaceutical. So we can imagine what treasure that we have if we make use of this rice bran. So the idea came from a seminar like this. We are invited to discuss something about rice bran and if we can make use out of it or not. So this triggers my business uh, approach and I found I thought that this is a good opportunity. Now this is the idea. Now we asked for a fund from everybody from the uh, academy and from the industrial modernization center and we are lucky to have the start initial money out of this and then came the rdi where we did a very nice project from my point of view from my collaborators and we believe that we developed something like this and these very nice capsules the money expend 
to develop this capsule is more than 5 million Egyptian pounds. I would say more than 60 or 70 percent come from, right, from RDI. We are developing a product, a healthy product, and I'm going to say anti-aging pro uh, product for the first time in the world from a waste material. So this gives an idea how a waste material can be developed into uh, a hen that is, uh, what you call it, having egg, uh, golden egg every day. So it is start a cash cow. So it is start by stabilizing, solving the problem of rice bran. And within the cafe, you will find some breadsticks here and you can find some yogurt with this rice bran, which we stabilized. And in other stages, we make capsules out of it. And these capsules were studied in the faculties of uh, pharmacy in Cairo and in the GUC and in Frankfurt and in Holland. And of course, once I go internationally, this comes from the RDI, which help us a lot. First, in the networking. One of the very big advantage of the RDI program is like this event we are discussing with intelligent people in Egypt and in Europe. And within these discussions and within this networking, it happened that some of the scientists tried our extract and found out that it helped the brain cell against aging. And according to this finding, the ministry in one of the ministries in Germany make a fund of about 1 million US dollars just to develop a product for elder population based on our rice bread. And this is the text of the proposal itself. It is based on the cooperation with the Egyptian supplier of the, Egyptian, of the rice bran, and we publish papers in Alzheimer journal. All of these are, I would say, a very direct impact of the proposal of the RDR. For interruption, for so there is, so I am coming to the big impact is that how to change the mindset, if I can say it is slightly changed, at the Faculty of Pharmacy Cairo University. They started to change the, regist the registration for master and the PhD degree to be focused on research that will go to a market, not only research for papers. And this is, takes about, about five years. They are watching what we are doing and they are following our progress and now I can see in the, in the faculty, my friends there, usually or previously I was lecturing in the faculty of pharmacy, so I have the good contact with them and they are seeing our progress. Now there are three or four projects, one for grape seed, one for developing pectin out of the waste of uh, orange, one to develop a pharmaceutical product out from the waste of tomato juice, out of the olive uh, leaves, all of these. I would say this is a very good change in uh, mindset and it will come later and more and more. Where I wanted to interrupt while you were uh, giving us a clear picture about the project is two aspects. One of them is the, the, the power of incubation, the incubating the idea in order to be more developed and has it returns afterwards. And the other thing is because you mentioned trouble. And I think there are many challenges um, when it comes to um, um, when it comes to developing a product and commercializing it till we have an end product at the end. Um, so I'm asking for these two aspects, of course, incubation and the challenges that, that you face, and also the, the, the other issue of uh, commercializing the, the product itself. Have we here, in, 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 I mean, domestically in Egypt, the market for such products? And if not, regionally, you, you do distribute your products regionally? Or how, because I, I heard Europe, Germany, uh, Holland, whatever, like, uh, but we didn't hear our countries, we didn't hear Mediterranean, uh, Southern Mediterranean countries. So uh, how do you do this? If you are going to talk about challenges, and please don't laugh for what I am so going to tell you. According to the regulation, whatever innovation you make, in the, I am talking about the herbal medicine and the registration at the Ministry of Health, 
regardless, I, I think we have a lot of friends from CCAM here, they know what I'm talking about. If the product you are developing is not developed or registered in EU or the States, it is impossible to register the product in Egypt. Regardless of what you are doing, or you are going to pay a lot of money just to have this proof. So from the very beginning, I was lucky that Rice brand is registered, so I don't have this problem. But you are talking about challenges for the innovation. So this is clearly stated. You aim to register whatever patent you have in Europe or America, and then come and, uh, come back to this Egypt. This is the easiest way. Okay. I don't have to make it for it is already known, but I'm talking about very frankly that there is a lot of changes that should took place. Uh, second of the challenges that I discussed with my colleagues in the faculty, everybody knows this challenge. So my answer to them, start your day doing what you can and have your night dreaming of what you can. So there are a lot of items that can be registered in the Ministry of Health with no problem. After you complete this registration and you are your products are already in the market, and for those who are not very aware of the pharmaceutical or herbal medicine, as far as I know that since the 50s, there is no single Egyptian product innovatively registered in Egypt or all, or all over the world. It is only one product which is, comes from a plant which is called Halfabar, that is registered for the first time in the world and is still used up till now. Now, there is a problem in the mindset of the Egyptian scientists and the registration and the support, how to develop such a product. So this is a good challenge. It is a challenge. I don't face it, but I know that it is present. So this is something that should be solved. This is within the Ministry of Health, I assume, because yeah. uh, the Ministry of ICT has another approach with which is very successful. You have a lot of uh, fund opportunities for ICT companies, and if they have a patent or something, they, they can easily register it, isn't it like this? Yes, actually, there is an um, affiliate to the Ministry. Uh, it's called the ITIDA, and this um, um, entity, um, is always uh, providing uh, companies uh, with um, funds and grants and support and technical support um, and maybe here i have to say that uh, maybe the the field of ict is somehow different than other fields because the companies are always part of the of the of the of the like the system we we, we do not do things alone we always have the companies with us that's maybe we have um, you can say that we have more innovations than other sectors. So uh, if we come back to, to the project itself uh, and my question concerning the market and how you um, commercialize it within the region, you have a domestic market here or not? Actually, if you are going to make, if you fail to market your product in your home country, then you are having a very big question. First of all, you have to register your product. So we already registered one product that you will find it here. It is just registered two months ago after five years of activity. And we have this under registration, which we expected to be in the market by the end of 2016. And we have, I think, three more in the pipeline. And we have to say also that this registered product and one of the those that are in the pipeline are studied within the RDI project. So for the market itself, we are the first in Egypt and the Middle East, and I would say in some other parts of the world that are transferring this pharmaceutical usage of rice bran into capsules and to have a, a solid proof of evidence of activity. This solid proof is the main pillar for our activity. We are not going to sell hocus pocus to the market. We are going to sell a product that is somehow very well studied with reputation in the journals that we publish our activity in diabetes, in Alzheimer, in hypertension. So to go in the market, it is, we are a company. We are not a research institute. We like research and we believe that research might be the 
best investment for ourselves but from the very beginning we are planning to be in the market so we selected something that we can market it later on so this i would say if you have the chance next year then you will find our advertising somewhere in egypt good for this i will i wanted to also uh, stress on the incubation of new ideas so uh, the the product that you um, had have at the end is um, was incubated in your company or in the uh, faculty of for, uh, pharmacy in in the university i mean this is very important because also we have ngos for example Mosr al khair who had their own incubations um, sectors uh, innovation cluster and they also incubate new ideas so how do you do this how do you encourage new students or even uh, this is mainly incubated in my company. We have the support, financial support. And when we are going to write proposal, as everybody knows here, we have to select partners. And uh, in selection, our partners, we define the role of each partner from the very beginning. So we make sure that they are not quarreling with each other later on. So the faculty of pharmacy, Cairo and GUC, and in Germany, everybody has a role. But all, all these roles are poured in the incubation in our company and uh, the development of the products, the registration, the marketing and the expenses, partially from the fund and partially from our company. Um, again, as a recommendation, as one of uh, entrepreneurs uh, here with us, what do you recommend um, that would enhance the, the innovation uh, ecosystem in Egypt? And I know you, you spoke about networking and uh, how this helped you in um, exploring the idea and further develop it. But if we want to have three, for example, uh, golden recommendation that you gave us, um, what do you wh what would you recommend? I think the cluster idea. This is a very initiated by the RDI, the second uh, phase. This is a very good to combine between the research and the academia. But I think there is also something else that is needed on the society to change the, the mindset of the society from the movies, from the songs, from a lot of things. Everybody, when you are talking about a researcher, he in his mind, this is an old man with the old big glasses and just kept in the research lab. This is a bad idea about the research. And this is something that has to be changed. And also to focus that innovation can come from a guy, of a, a gentleman or a girl of the 20, of the 30. It is not just limited to the researchers. To change this mindset is very difficult. But we have to start it step by step. Um, uh, I would like to encourage you, please, if you have any success stories or any uh, comments that you would like to share with us, please do. Because it's, it's just a discussion. I mean, we have a lot of uh, colleagues uh, from uh, SICAM. We have SICAM, uh, we have Heliopolis University students. And maybe if you have a project or questions for our uh, experts here, Maybe you can ask them also. Uh, we also, Dr. Taha, yes. Thank you. Um, actually, thanks for this uh, initiative and uh, for invitation. Uh, uh, concerning uh, what uh, Dr. Abisha Kuir mentioned and the activity of ICT, uh, I, I have been informed with this uh, social oriented activities and uh, as the title of this meeting or we can say uh, casual meeting <laughs> uh, it's local innovation and what I, I i was thinking in my way to come here um, the difference between international and the local innovation which better to be used actually they worked on uh, i have been in a workshop or more uh, they worked on the local innovation because it's more suitable for sustainability but in the same Time, uh, parallel to that, they are linked with international ones um, to keep the innovation on the highest level or on the standard. My question, actually, not for uh, Dr. Heba Gaber or Dr. Amr Hilal or you, uh, but maybe to others, maybe nobody here 
from them. Uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, Zainab Sadr can be the person, maybe also Avir Shafir. Uh, in local innovation, what I have seen the last three months or four months, uh, we found from the Egyptian government different bodies or maybe different departments in the same ministry uh, calls under the same title for local innovation, for um, local manufacturing, for um, uh, maybe Monarawi here also. <laughs> uh, so when we can make this, we can say, uh, coordination between uh, because I, uh, between these different departments, because I applied for uh, three calls in different three departments with the same project because it's the same more or less title. Uh, actually, I don't know if it is in the same topic of the meeting or not, but it's local innovation, how we can innovate our um, our calls. <laughs> it's local innovation. Uh, to find the call from uh, the academy, or from the, the SCTTF, uh, from uh, the Ministry of uh, Scientific Research, three calls with the same title. Uh, so we need local innovation in the level, strategic level, policy making level, uh, executive level, and between researcher and scientist. I don't know, uh, anybody here can give me... Sorry, I just wanted to clear the question. You mean that you want to increase the funds that is available or make, made available from the national institution and um, or, or you want to uh, just have a, a collaborative fund for all... The, the fund exists, okay? But the, the point is that there is what is the, the local innovation, how to use this fund, to make fund from different departments under the same title. Maybe Zainab can answer me or Mona. Uh, we, we, I, maybe... I consider it as uh, like uh, local innovation also. Okay. Maybe Abir, you can comment? Okay. Uh, according to my understanding is that he wants uh, to have a pool of fund or a, co a collaborative fund with uh, many entities contributing to it just to support the local innovation in Egypt. This is correct, Dr. Taha? I'm, I'm talking right. This is how you see it. And you want to have it as one, in one pool in order to increase for example the project increase the project that uh, comes to just one uh, end and afterwards you can choose for them and it will be uh, has uh, good results okay um thank you dr david for this question and i i know that you have this question in mind since uh long ago, <laughs> not only a few months, but anyway. Um, I will, I know you quite well, so we, by the way, me and Dr. Taha were uh, our colleagues uh, since many years, so uh, I know that he, uh, he, ha he has this question in mind. So uh, I will speak uh, firstly from the uh, point of view of the Ministry of ICT. Maybe we have a different situation because we are, as I said, uh, in the sector of ICT, companies are always and have been always part of the sector. So, uh, and we maybe, uh, if you compare the sector with other sectors like health, agriculture, we are more mature when it comes to innovation. So we were, we were the first sector to have, to establish a, a dedicated center for innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so uh, that's why um, we have a very um, maybe unique case because for example in the ministry of health uh, uh, m m the com pharmaceutical companies they are not uh, very much engaged with the ministry as for ict companies so for us uh, we we are um, targeting ict we we don't mind to be uh, a part of a, a bigger fund but we will always have to uh, speak about ict per se um, so, uh, if you um, think of uh, or think of the positive 
uh, look at the bright side, as we say, uh, you can look at this as an opportunity because you have many uh, funds and you can apply uh, in two different entities and maybe you can successful with one but not with the other. <laughs> so um, that's why, uh, but I agree with you that uh, the, the optimum situation is to have one pool uh, for innovation. Uh, but let's say that the, the innovation ecosystem in Egypt is not yet that mature. Uh, would you like to comment on this? Well, uh, it seems that the question itself, it has different um, angle and different uh, uh, perspective. So I will answer from the perspective and what, which I understood that your comment is, uh, we have several funds, uh, similar calls, and specifically you, you submitted three uh, to the three calls, same proposal. Correct? And which one was funded? Which one was funded? None? The first one. So, because this is very important, because the application of fund, uh, this is uh, an issue. Okay. But b because you see, Dr. Amrahel already mentioned um, a very uh, good example. It's the same topic, several pro proposal in different phases of the of the work, different funder. If we stick to one funder for each topic, it would have stopped at the first phase. So you need this um, a variety of funding mechanism and funding organization, because if, if you know, uh, we are 90 million, almost 90,000 researchers. I don't know how many companies, how many NGOs. So it would be very difficult to, uh, focus in one organization for innovation, because which aspect of innovation? Halos? <laughs> well, I agree with you. For, I, I don't want to um, promote topics or, but it is, it might, yes, but it, the same title, but if you go deeper, it's, if you go deeper, it, it can't be, it can't be. Because uh, f to fund an innovative project, you cannot repeat. However, if you are sure, please bring these three calls and let's sit with the uh, responsible organization to see how we can synergize. Because uh, we're, um, fund is not always the problem, but we need to manage the fund. But uh, I would like also to know if you got the other two fund, uh, the two pro proposals funded. Thank you. Thank you, Zena, for this. Um, I would like very much to know uh, how how students see innovation nowadays. Uh, for example, if you if you hear innovation, what comes up in, into your mind, and how do you see it? How do you see the involvement of uh, such a sector? Who would raise his hand? <laughs> You're here. Okay. First, I have a question for Dr. Am. I just answer you... my question first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump. Okay. Innovation for me, it's a creation. It's uh, you create something from nothing. You have an idea, and you have to make it an application. Something. Just new. Yeah. Uh, well, I I have I uh, I have my objection concerning yeah. nothing uh, from nothing, but uh, I mean I mean difference between innovation and the invention, and I think Dr. Zuhair is here, and those who are quite old since five or six years can remember his first lecture about innovation. You should go to the market. For example, building the pyramid, our pyramid, it's not an innovation. Will not it doesn't go to the market. You are not going to to make one million pyramids. So there is difference between one major uh, uh, feature of innovation. It should go to the market. So there is a problem. You solve it, and the, the way of solving it can be entered to the market. So it is uh, it is distributed. And I think uh, Dr. Zahiri can give a 
good talk about innovation. So Same. let me for the other people. May may I add my yes. question? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you said healthy product, I, I want to know you just uh, meant uh, a treatment or a drug without any side effects. So I think uh, if it's uh, no side effects, this is waste material has to be uh, buzzed by synthetic process. I thought that synthetic, uh, synthetic drugs have a side effect, so it's not truly healthy product. So if we came to my product, we are talking about a natural product that is usually taken as a food. Brown rice is a food. So there is no synthesis about it. But there is a difference between, or there is a very big definition of healthy products. What we are talking here, even about this supplement, even after all research that we did, we are talking about food supplements or herbal medicine. This is not, I would say, doesn't have the claim. The claim in pharmacy that it is given to a drug, that if you have these two pills, your sugar level will be less. This is a drug, and to go to this stage, this is very much bigger than our capacity and even the whole funds in Egypt. We are talking about maybe one billion US dollar to change to shift from a healthy product should go to the first stage of clinical, second stage of clinical study, third stage of clinical study. This is very expensive. We don't have the money for that and we don't have the even the energy to do all of that. So we have the first step to have a supplement that has potential health benefits. It is not a replacement of drug, but it helped, for sure, it helped the health. Okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to um, ask another question because we have here people from the region and Tunisia is one of the top countries in innovation at the moment. So I just wanted to give the mic to uh, uh, um, as Mr. Mais. Yes, Mr. Mais in order to talk about how he see it, how you see it in uh, Tunisia and uh, how there is a possibility to incubate a local innovation. Uh, thank you. Uh, really, uh, in Tunisia, we have uh, for uh, local innovation, we develop a uh, uh, very uh, big uh, and strategic program based on, based on uh, 10 techno parks. And uh, uh, with this 10 in each uh, techno park, we have uh, the four components. Uh, higher education, research, incubator, and uh, uh, incubator, and also uh, uh, possibility to build your SMEs. So, actually, in Tunisia, we have these uh, ten techno parks and uh, forty-two incubator for SMEs, and more than uh, twenty incubator for. Uh, agriculture and the medicine plant and others. This is uh, make uh, the innovation is close to end user and uh, we have this interaction between all uh, these uh, components. For that, uh, we have this potential and uh, we are well ranked for innovation. So you have many stages of incubating the idea itself. It's not uh, just... Um, Yes, we have uh, first we have many stages because uh, you have uh, possibility to develop uh, your startup uh, and after that uh, to uh, this startup will be uh, an incubator. After that, you have possibility to obtain uh, uh, local terrain to build your uh, SMEs. Uh, also, with uh, and uh, you have uh, uh, many facilities. Uh, in payment, in internet, in electricity, in, in phone, all uh, this uh, almost uh, for free. And uh, uh, another uh, thing, we have in Tunisia developed 15 uh, funding scheme for research innovation uh, enhancement. 
and with this 15 uh, different finding uh, I, I just wanted to know um, are these technoparks funded by the t Tunisian government or they are co-funded by uh, other say, uh, first, funding agents first uh, they are funded by the Tunisian government but actually they're private because uh, they uh, the government uh, by uh, have actually only 51% of these technoparks. Others, uh, some uh, funding uh, as a bank or uh, uh, big SMEs uh, take a part on this uh, technopark. So this is uh, half hal. Also, we have here experts from Morocco, and Morocco is uh, actually um, one also of the important uh, countries that. Uh, have um, uh, a good uh, innovation at, uh, uh, sectors. So if you can comment on, on innovation in your country, this will be uh, very nice. Well, uh, well, in Morocco, we are starting uh, talking about innovation in 2000. So in 2002, I started a program about incubators, innovative, innovative incubators. And uh, this experience, uh, in this experience, we have a lot of problems in starting, especially in rules and in laws. And uh, time to time, we, 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 we starting to change laws in Morocco, administrative procedures. But we, we have, uh, at this time, we have uh, also some problems for the blocked innovation in Morocco because the, the problem is not in uh, it's not really in infrastructures and uh, dedicated to innovative but it's uh, mind thinking in top management in Morocco they don't want to change administrative uh, all administrative uh, rules to be flexible for innovative uh, actions for uh, innovative incubator innovator uh, project so at this time, we have uh, we have changed it, but we have a lot of uh, more work to to change the rules to get uh, more results in uh, in, in in innovative uh, in innovation in Morocco. We we have, for example, we have started by incubator. At this moment, we have started with the clusters dedicated to to inc uh, to innovations. Uh, we are starting to implement the research into SMEs. Some programs dedicated to to integrate research, uh, university research to SMEs, but it's not enough in Morocco. Though it's, though you have a lot of process to enhance, but uh, according to the Global Innovation Index, you're just climbing there in um, in innovation. So you have a very good um, fundamental basis that will enable you to overcome these challenges, I think. Yeah, I think yes. I think at this moment we can uh, be challenged, challengers in, in innovative, but it's not really the hope that we want. We are in 50% of, uh, of our uh, courses to, to get uh, the, our goals. So there is a many, many gaps who blocked us, but we are working to change these gaps. For, for something interesting for uh, innovative projects uh, or innovative incubacies. Um, my last question will be uh, addressed to Dr. Zuhairi, <laughs> my former boss. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you were also the president of Heliopolis University, which is um, assigned with uh, sustainable development, and you have a lot of um, uh, curricula tackling this issue. How do you see it? How do you see sustain? How do you see development to be sustained in uh, the oil Mediterranean countries? And uh, how do you see the important challenges that we have to overcome? to um, really establish innovation well within the community. Thank you, Ian. Uh, actually, sustainable development is not an option. It is a must for these southern Mediterranean countries, even the northern Mediterranean across the southern Europe. And why? Because uh, the southern Mediterranean on, in Europe or the southern Mediterranean and in the south of the Mediterranean, both sets of countries, whether in Europe or in North Africa and Middle East, are suffering from depletion of resources, particularly water resources. 
uh, there is a big growth of population, particularly in the south. And also, there is uh, a quite a, a very strong need for uh, uh, innovation, but a sustainable innovation uh, uh, within sustainable, I mean, within the concepts of sustainable development, let's say. So if you, the first part is Heliopolis University is a university that was founded on a sustainable development concept following the, uh, it's actually, I think, the only model of universities in Egypt that was, uh, instead of having university having a startup, it's a startup that eventually led to a university. So it's an enterprise that eventually led to a university. Of course, SICM is, the, is a very good example of sustainable development in agriculture. And uh, I see that this is the only way to go forward. We have to think of innovations that are uh, sustainable, that uh, particularly in water and food. And here I would like to, in the Euro-Mediterranean region, I would like to uh, maybe uh, highlight two initiatives in particular. I don't know, I came later, I don't know if you talked about them. One initiative is the uh, PRIMA initiative, Partnership for Research and Innovation in the Mediterranean area. And it is only focused on uh, water resources and food systems. So it is directed to uh, uh, research and innovation in these two areas. Of course, with a sustainable, uh, uh, let's say, with sustainable impact on all the uh, uh, actions that will be in the initiative. I don't want to get into details, not to confuse people, but uh, PRIMA is an uh, initiative which was proposed by several uh, EU member states and several South Mediterranean countries, where the countries are going to co-fund the activities of research and innovation. Did you speak about it, uh, Dr. Aheba? No? Okay. Where the countries are going to fund the research and innovation actions, and the European Commission will top up the uh, initiative. Right now, we're, we're talking about 200 million euros an envelope of 200 million euros, which is not a small envelope. Hopefully, it's a long process. It has to take the approval of the European uh, Parliament and European Council before uh, it is launched. And hopefully, it will launch in 2017. And Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, and all the South Mediterranean countries actually are uh, uh, heavily involved in this. And they are uh, uh, the pled pledged such a big amount of money, let's say. Uh, and it will be a first initiative where the South Mediterranean countries and the EU member states are working on equal uh, footing, means that uh, the co-decision making, co-responsibility with co-funding and co-ownership. Another initiative which is more related to innovation, uh, also Euro-Mediterranean, I'm talking about bi-regional Euro-Mediterranean initiatives, is the uh, common uh, Euro-Mediterranean innovation agenda where uh, this is an agenda that the uh, group of senior officials in research and innovation uh, have developed. And it's an agenda for innovative actions that will be funded by the European Commission and the uh, countries as well. And it should launch by a first action next month uh, in Brussels, where the Director General of Development and Cooperation in the European Commission are hopefully going to announce uh, some funding for this. Did you talk about this, Heather? Okay. So, <laughs> so I, these are the two initiatives that I think are uh, quite needed at that point in time. I just would like to reiterate the concepts again of co-ownership that whichever initiatives the South Mediterranean countries are going to work with, with the EU counterparts, there must be a co-ownership and this can only be achieved by co-funding of activities where the researchers will feel that uh, they own the, the initiative because their governments and their authorities are putting fund. And there is also co-decision making, not some actions that are planned in the EU and uh, have to be implemented in the South countries without maybe having the capacity or having the uh, ownership for such initiatives. So I think uh, on the long run, these two initiatives will have to be directed towards sustainable development. Now, with the um, sustainable development goals of the UN, I think the whole world has to be geared towards sustainable development. It's not a choice. It is uh, something that uh, we have to uh, consider in all of our actions. And one of the good practices here is uh, now the EU, when they actually, when they launch uh, uh, a call in whichever field, they usually highlight 
that they will give extra score for uh, actions that are sustainable, that put in, in mind sustainable development, for instance, that uh, are going to uh, uh, preserve the environment, they are going to uh, preserve the, the resources, you know, in, in any action. So, uh, and the whole world, the enterprise is now being changed into green. And, and the, the, the new wave is that the competition in the future, if you're not green, you're out. If it's not green, you're, you're, you really won't have a chance for competition. I think this is the future wave. So uh, I hope that uh, we will see more actions in Egypt uh, from the research uh, or the funding agencies that always have sustainable development in mind and that will compel the bidders for, for these actions, whether they're enterprise or research uh, entities, to uh, think twice about how they implement their actions and uh, also what is the outcome of such uh, actions. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I need just to ask you one last question. Sorry for this, but uh, because you tackled the issue that uh, Heliopolis University are uh, coming from a private sector, and this was based uh, on the research that is embedded in SECAM. So they came up with the idea of why not enlarging the concept and having the university. What do you think where research actually has to be in universities or within the private sector and you uh, uh, and uh, the enterprises? Well, I, I, research doesn't have, uh, I mean, you cannot say either or. Research has to be in universities and research centers in the enterprise. One of the indicators uh, for development of countries in, in terms of research and development is what percentage of research is done in the enterprise. And, and why we, we want to encourage research in the enterprise, because uh, it is very obvious that when an enterprise goes into action, uh, research action, they always have in mind the market. Whereas when a research center or university goes into research action, usually the researchers are, are just fulfilling their uh, dreams or their uh, uh, vision. And it was very obvious in the RDI program, actually, when we had uh, uh, consortia, where we had it was, it was actually an eligibility criteria that every consortium has to have one from both sides. When the research, when the action was led by the universities or research center, uh, sometimes we ended up with a very good product, but it's not marketable. And here I'd like to reiterate what uh, Dr. Amro was talking about. Uh, innovation is uh, a marketable invention. So the invention that sells. And it's very good to have a, a very innovative product, but if it's not marketable, then it is not called innovation at the end. Whereas when we had uh, leaders in the enterprise, usually they were very much focused on the market and they knew from before they started the action if the, the market, how, how the market was, if they had a market share, if they were going to be able to compete or not. So best case scenario, have them both in the action, of course. But uh, uh, we cannot say where the innovation or where the research has to be conducted only in universities and centers or only enterprise has to be conducted in both. Best case scenario that they work together, like in the US, but this is a different culture, of course, because in the US, even not in Europe now, that the culture has not reached that far. In the US, uh, mostly the, the researchers who work in universities and academia are uh, not being, are not able to move up the, the, the promotion ladder except if they work with the enterprise. The, the system compels them to work with the enterprise. They take also some sabbaticals and they go to the business sector. They see it from different perspectives. So innovation has to, research has to be conducted in both sectors, whether private or public, university, academia, or enterprise. And when the enterprise is compelled to do research because they know that it will pay off. This is the best case. And usually countries that are quite developed, the ratio is usually 70% of research is done in the private sector and 30% in the public sector. Thank you very much for um, uh, this um, input. And we would like um, to go to Italy to uh, be transmitted to Italy in order to continue the Science Cafe. So please stay tuned um, online in order to do this. Thank you.